I just hand over to Just Van den Broeke. Um, he wants to tell us something about um, quality of service monitoring for OGC web services. So, please. Yeah. Uh, Danke schön, uh, Thomas. Um, ja, ich uh, bin sehr verehrt. Uh, vielen Dank, dass ich hier uh, einen Vortrag machen kann. Und dann werde ich jetzt umschalten nach uh, Englisch. Das ist uh, Deutsch ist meine dritte Sprache, vierte Sprache. Um, so I will continue in English. Um, this is about Geo Health Check. Like Thomas said, it's uh, more officially co uh, quality of service monitor for geospatial web services and we'll see what it is about and like the last speaker we're all using reveal us so i give some credits to the to the maker Hakim El Hatab. um thomas already told a little bit about me um i'm from the netherlands and doing various things there for one thing i'm trying to pull uh, osgonl as well um local chapter of osgo um, and this project, I'm not doing this uh, by myself. Actually, Tom Kralidis started this project. Probably many of you know him. He's also working on various other uh, projects. Um, and Hannes uh, Reuter from, from Germany. And he's also one of the, the, the contributors. And there's many more, but these, these are main people. So here probably i don't have to explain what ogc is what ows is i think like the last speakers were already very detailed into the services so i i, I skip this a bit um so the, the the actual contents of my talk will be well first some monitoring challenges and we'll we'll go from there we'll go from there um so suppose you're running OTC web service, you're running your WMS, WFS, um, TMS, okay, not entirely OTC, TMS, WMTS. Um, and at some point, you get a phone call from a user or an email. I see pink tiles, uh, it's on German. Ich sehe rose Kachel. It says, yeah. Um, and this is, this is what, what the user would expect, and this is what the user often would see. So here you have your pink tiles, but those, those tiles are not sent by the server. The server says, well, I'll, I'll send pink tiles today. No, actually, behind the scenes, there's a problem. And the problem could be manifold. It could be that you're not receiving an image, but you receive uh, a well-formed uh, exception report. Or even worse, you could um, receive the error in the image, which is one of the WMS options. Um, my point is, oh yeah, the other thing. Let's say your database is being uh, filled every night, and somehow the process fails, and you get nice white images, but still valid images. My point is, in many of these infrastructures, uh, regular HTTP monitors are being run. And as the OTC services um, tend to have their own error handling on top of regular HTTP, it would be noticed. So 200 means everything is OK. You get the white image, you get your exception report. So your monitor, your regular uptime monitor, will never detect these situations I just uh, saw. Um, we go further. You can have a get capabilities response, which is OK, well formed. It could be a static file, but it will never guarantee that any of the more detailed services will ever work. Um, and recently, I've been doing some time-based services. Um, uh, like sensor observation service, sensor things API, um, irregularities. So, for instance, we're working with 52 North, probably everyone knows, um, several people here in the conference. There's a source viewer, but you can, could have, let's say, a gap in your data. How would you know this? Um, so, this requires, all in all, uh, very more detailed monitoring than a generic monitoring. And the other thing is, 
Um, there, there are many uptime monitors you can register, like uh, PingDom or there, there, there are uptime robots. I use those as well because they send me an SMS as, as the service really down. But many of the critical OTC services, let's say, within governments, they run internally on the internet, so you cannot use an external monitor. You need to have something internally. Usually the IT department has something like a ping. But I hope I made my point a bit that we need uh, an OTC um, aware uh, service for, for, qual no, for quality, not just for uptime, but quality and service in general. And it would be nice to have history capture because um, one of your users may, may call and say, well, um, the service is down and you, you look and no, the service is up. So you, you, need some you need history capture. So I hope I made this point clear that there is a need. Um, actually, I was looking for such a tool and then I came along GeoHealthCheck, which was already started in 2015 and I started contributing to the project. And we have a demo running. You can even you can register there and register for service. Um, I'll give a short walkthrough. Um, so uh, there's there's still lots of work to be done on the GUI, but the main thing is um, it has a dashboard where you can register your services, and I will show you can also register the specific checks that you want to do. Um, so here you see already um, some, some statistics, and you can zoom in on a specific service. And you can see it has been uh, offline, or it has had, had, had errors. Um, and then it got back up. So the scenario is really, you can uh, log in, and, and you can en enable if people c uh, can register, or you can disable that. Um, and then you can choose from um, a list of services that we support currently. It's an extensible thing. Um, we recently added, it's not yet here, for instance, GeoNode. GeoNode. Um, but here you would see a list of most of the regular OTC services. So you can add what is called a resource. And then you give just the endpoint. You don't have to give the capabilities. You just say the endpoint. Uh, like here, it's a WMS. You can give some tags. And then you get into the editor. And there you can configure basically which tests are to be fired on your endpoint. And the terminology we use is probes. So you have a list of probes. And each probe is basically a request, mostly, and some tests on the result of the uh, response. So we can zoom in. For instance, by default, you always get a get capabilities probe. So it will fire uh, a get capabilities uh, on your endpoint. But you can also, this is a WMS, have a probe for, let's say, get map. And then you can edit the probe with specific parameters. And some in gray are already fixed because it's, it, the services should always be uh, uh, WMS. So this configures a get capabilities request. Um, now basically, you can choose a version. And then the second thing of a probe are the probe checks. And those are the checks which are actually performed on the response. So for instance, you want to have a valid XML at least from a capabilities or that it doesn't contain an OWS exception, or and that contains at least a title. Um, so in that sense, and if you add, for instance, a get map, it, it, it has um, some intelligence to figure out what layers there are. So you can select a layer and, and um, configure basically a get map request on all, in this case, 70 layers. Um, and once you have configured, um, the tests are run currently every hour, but we're uh, this week on the Code Sprint we're working on a test frequency per uh, endpoint. And when something fails, you can configure um, an email and recently also a webhook 
to, to get notified. So for instance, I use a separate email box. This is, this is one of the governmental uh, WMSs, so they regularly fail and get back. And, and this is not even due to the WMS itself, by the way. It's, all, it's a network which is maintained by an, a governmental IT department. So uh, things can fail for various reasons. But at least we, we get notified. Um, so this, this is basically was a walkthrough. So how, how does it work? Um, basically, it has three parts, GeoHell check. There is what you just saw, the dashboard, the web app, where you configure your services and your, your health checks, basically. And then there is a runner, which is now running via a cron job, which performs the actual checks. And it says plugins, because all these checks or uh, probes that you just saw are actually plugins. And that's a nice thing. You can extend it as well. And these two parts are glued or via a database. And we'll get to that. So this is basically the, you could say, the architecture. The web app is what we just saw, a dashboard and a runner runs in the background, runs the checks, and the database um, stores the results and all the configuration and everything. And it's a Python project. And for the dashboard, we use Flask. Uh, it's a, a standard uh, whiskey uh, setup. So you can run it in Nginx or GUnicorn. But the preferred way, and I've seen it also on the conference here, is Docker. Um, so if you're not yet into Docker, get into Docker. Uh, it's, it really works well. And the runner is now via cron, and it runs what is called the probes and checks. Those are plugins. Um, it has result reporting. And what I said, notification. You can have notifications uh, for the whole uh, server, or you can uh, have a notification and, uh, per um, endpoint, so a specific email. Uh, certain endpoints are maybe maintained by others, and they may have to get those emails. Um, I talked about probes and checks, which is really the, um, the way that uh, GeoHealthCheck performs uh, the health checks, the quality of service checks. So they're, they're actually all plugins, and there's in the standard package, uh, there's quite a few already, and you can write custom plugins. And when you have a plugin, you also configure all, the, all it, there, its parameters, and that will be visible in the UI. I think there's a, an image later on. And the database, uh, in short, uh, it runs via SQL Alchemy, and you can use um, preferably Postgres, PostGS, or SQL Alchemy. Oh, sorry, SQLite. Any database basically is supported via SQL Alchemy. Um, there's tags, so you can group resources because it can get um, you can get uh, lots of them. Installation is um, basically a standard uh, Python setup. Um, but it is easiest using Docker. We have uh, versioned Docker images on Docker Hub. So, and we have Docker Compose. Docker Compose basically is a tool to combine several Docker images, one Docker image for your database, for instance, one Docker image for the uh, GeoHealth tag, and it glues it all together and you run one thing. You could be up and running in minutes if you have a Docker environment. So. Various settings. Um, I won't go in all the details, um, but you can imagine you have several settings in a file. And for instance, if you want notifications and to whom it has to go, um, uh, of course, you have to configure also your email um, client if you uh, need email notification. Five minutes. A little bit about architecture. Um, we have a uh, reasonably simple data model. Central is the resource. That's the endpoint. And it's related to a user. And, um, and we also keep all the history, which are the runs. Um, so the model is really each resource has a, has a URL. And that's an endpoint. And the probes, they fire requests on that URL. 
you can have multiple probes, and a probe can have multiple checks. It's basically the checklist. And finally, it will uh, create a report, which is now a JSON file, so you can format it in any uh, other um, format. Talked about the plugin model, but seen the time. Um, but I, I would like to show some code because, yeah, plugins always sounds very difficult, but it's actually very simple. So this is the simplest plugin. This the the the, the probe. This is an HTTP request, and it's a, it's basically a template. So you have to provide some parameters, and um, for instance, it, its name and what type of resource. So it could be a WMS resource, whatever, and which are the available checks. And that's, that's about it. And uh, for instance, if you want to implement a check, this is a check which implements if the response that comes back from HTTP is not errored, which means it's not in the 400 or 500 range. And it's just a few lines here. And then, of course, it can get more uh, elaborate with uh, capabilities, but it's still, um, there's no, no code here. It's just definition, because it already knows it will do an HTTP request. It only needs to know what the template uh, URL is. And basically, that's what you define here. Um, and it can be extended. And finally, it's also what you would see in the UI. So you configure parameters, let's say a version. And you can select a version. It's now a drop-down. Um, something about the project, it's on, on GitHub, and now, yeah, like I said, started uh, Tom Kralidis somewhere in, in, an air, in an airplane in 2014. Um, it's on a GeoPython organization. Any people uh, programming Python? Here? Yeah, I see some, some hands. Because there's many other interesting projects there. Um, and on the code sprint, uh, various... Uh, Authors are, are, or developers from these projects are actually there, so you, you can meet them in person and maybe uh, cooperate because we, um, now we, are we have a demo running on demo.geohealthcheck.org and um, yeah, some main things are under development. There's an issue tracker um, because this, this presentation is online via geohealthcheck.org, and we're planning, for instance, a REST API architecture, so you can also configure um, the checks uh, from a distance, and integration with existing monitoring tools. And please, um, we, we, we can uh, always uh, uh, need your help, coding, testing, documentation, and luckily we, we are receiving more and more help and PRs, but uh, yeah, you're very welcome. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, are there any questions? I actually have two questions. First question is, why does this slide set uh, 42 pages? 42 pages? <laughs> <laughs> I just checked. It's online. No, 42 is the answer to all questions and this kind of stuff. But apparently you don't know. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other question is, uh, have, you, have you been considering to uh, get the, the error messages actually into HTTP with the OGC? So is there, is there thoughts at the OGC that you don't return a 200 if it actually fails? Because I know that there has been some discussion mm -hmm. uh, because it would make sense to say that the server answers, yeah, it's not a 200, I'm not sending you anything, but instead uh, it, it doesn't happen. So do you know whether there's going to be an alignment of the error to the HTTP standard? Yeah. Um, so the question is, is, is OGC uh, improving or improving, uh, changing their um, standards to, to really support error messaging in uh, HTTP? I think they, they are. There's, 
The most recent uh, developments, for instance, WFS3, is anyone following that? Well, the general movement is to go more to REST uh, API type of standards. So, so you use uh, HTTP, not just HTTP verbs, but also the error reporting. So, and for instance, Sensor Things API is also uh, more RESTful. But I wouldn't know about the existing standards if they are being modified. And I know of some WMS servers. I remember in the past they will actually would send uh, HTTP error codes, but most wouldn't. And at least we we forced, for instance, to send an exception report because the the most difficult thing would be to to analyze an error which is written in the image. That would be sort of artificial intelligence. Well, maybe a nice student project or yeah. Sorry, you think. Hi. Um, I <clears throat> wanted to add an example uh, which you didn't name in the beginning, which is a necessity all of Europe has, namely Inspire, uh, because the Inspire guidelines um, have um, they demand a certain uptime and performance from the services. And we actually tried the GeoHealth Checker to monitor this yeah. about a year ago, but couldn't do so because it was a limitation of a ground laying library that WMS 1.3 standards were not supported. I checked again, now it's supported. Yes. And I think it would be an idea for a probe to actually add Inspire val val validation of the um, response XML. Yeah, or very good question. The actual question came up also on, on Phosphor GAU from someone from the JRC. And of course, yeah, um, in Inspire you have a, a very specific quality of service uh, requirement regarding WMS, and that's hardly to do with one of the standard probes, like a response have to be come back within five seconds, and you have to have so, so many uh, requests handled, and, and yeah, the, it would be a matter of developing a standard probe, yeah, custom probe, I mean, custom probe. Um, but we're happy uh, to co cooperate and, uh, yeah, good question. Um, a question, this, this looks really useful for system admins and so on to, to monitor services. But as a developer, I'm also seeing some um, potential to use this in during development of, of services and so on. So do you think it would be uh, very difficult to um, extend your health check to use, for instance, uh, for load testing, performance testing? Because you have the probes, you just need to run them uh, yeah, and, and do some reports, I guess. Yeah, you can, can write a custom probe. I mean, uh, 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 there are two types of probes. I I've probably forgot to say. There's one is a templated one, that you have one request and you have your checks. But you may have a look into There's, for instance, a, um, a WMS crawler. And then you can do as many requests as you have. And, and you can have checks that maybe say, well, um, those uh, responses have to be within that many seconds, and otherwise it's an error. So you can write custom um, probes that, that would do that kind of scenarios, yeah. It would require some Python coding and use of the OWS lib, I should say, which is very handy to talk to um, as a client library for remote services. Another question? Or auch eine Frage auf Deutsch? Das würde auch gehen. Good. A um, lot of information. Um, I know I personally will definitely check um, this um, and uh, will try to, to use it in, in my projects. Um, I can't promise that I will ever contribute to that, but uh, we will see. Um, so, thank you. Um, uh, for your talk and um, th thanks to the audience. Um, I think it's time to get some coffee um, and um, refresh a little bit um, for the rest of the show. Thanks.
Okay, thank you.